out of the two eyes that I had, my left eye was the better of the two, from, from, especially from a, an aesthetics point of view. Um, my right eye was a little bit more sunken in and it, it would sometimes uncontrollably roll and I kept it pretty well under control but it wasn't always easy. I mean, what were some of the different the things that you felt were different about your blindness how it affected you growing up? Well actually high school was probably the best three years of my life. The, the, the years prior to that were living hell because A I was I went to public school my entire life which I, I'm grateful for my parents of making that decision rather than putting me in a you know a state school or an institution for the blind and and you know I that that my own preference is that I would never send a blind student to that kind of school unless they had <clears throat> a lot of other a lot of other issues uh, than just blindness because I think those schools teach you how to be blind instead of how to live in a, in a sighted world but that's probably a whole other issue. They kept coming in the first few days while I was in the intensive care unit and saying, you know, can you move your toes? And so I would, you know, try to move my toes and I would think that they were moving and I'd be like, oh, aren't they, aren't they moving around? And they're, they said no. <laughs> um, so I think, but there's always that hope even if they tell you that your injury is one that is going to leave you paralyzed the rest of your life, um, you always think, oh, well, that, that's not me. Like, it's not going to happen to me. I'll, I'll be able to regain some function or, you know, so I kept trying to move my toes and, you know, I'll still have times when I just kind of sit here and I'm like, Ugh, you know, <laughs> but nothing ever happens. Forever, I will kind of d rediscover my injury. I, I don't know. Something special is with this company. Um, there's a dynamic and there's a there's there's something that they give to each other and I think it's because they all share one thing in common and it's that they're unique that their lives have been changed forever by their disabilities even if it was from birth or if it was later in their lives and they know that that they're, they've been brought together for that for that purpose but also to put up an amazing show and I think that's the greatness of family. I, watch, I love watching the audience as much as I love watching the show because you can tell who's been there before in years past. You can tell who's new to the experience and you can watch them settle in, sitting on the edge of their seat and nervous as we limp out or as we walk out with different body types, gates and sometimes figures that are not the most pleasant to see. And Soon you watch them all relax, 10 minutes, 15 minutes into the show. They just, they seem different. And I know it's because they, they're losing the disabilities. They go, this is an amazing, amazing show. And they lose the disabilities. Oh, are we ready? Okay. So, uh, so I was 21 when I went out to California, and at age 27 is when I went into a doctor's office with the first symptoms of Parkinson's. And then um, I was 33 when I got the definitive diagnosis. By this time I was back in Denver. Um, I had moved back, my agents had dropped me. They didn't want me because I wasn't perfect, you know. And I wasn't the daughter of somebody or the wife of somebody, you know, so I was on my own and I did the best I could. I got established, just getting established, just getting things going. And I got struck down with this silly disease that, that nobody knew anything about for younger people. So I'm, I'm 47 now and I still am younger than most people with Parkinson's and I've had it for 20 years. And, uh, I'm worse than people that are older than me because I've had it for 20 years. I am in the advanced stages, whatever that means. <laughs> and uh, I decided that I was defective, so I wasn't going to be able to work anymore as an actor. It broke my heart. And I, I made some tapes late at night, and I've heard them since then, audio tapes talking about how rotten my life was and how I was lucky to be alive and and um, what was I gonna do you know who was gonna love me 
was a big question. Um, so uh, I decided to go into the, the other side of theater. A friend offered me an assistant directing position for a play. So I went in and did that. And I was enjoying it, but it wasn't that, it wasn't that fulfilling. But while I was working on another production as an assistant director, some friends that were in the show said that they were going to be directing a show for a group called Family. And I had caught them on TV the year before when they were doing Anything Goes. They had some coverage and I thought, oh my God, what now, you know, this, the GIMP group, you know. And I thought, I don't qualify, I can't, I can't do that, I'm not GIMPy enough or whatever. And I have a disease called transverse myelitis, which causes paralysis from the waist down or more in some cases. Well, a lot of people don't understand what's happening. Like, there's this one girl at my school that spreads this rumor that I fake it to get attention. And a lot of people in school and the community kind of tend to think like that for some reason or another. And also, it's just really hard, like, trying to get jobs and trying to, like, be involved in theater because if you're differently abled, people don't, like, I don't know, accept you in some ways. How you feel? How you feeling? Well, the other day, I landed on my knee wrong in one of the dances, and it kind of, I don't know, it kind of made it hurt again. So I've got a brace coming in sometime this week, and hopefully I can get it back to health again before the show and stuff. So I'm okay today. So it's been pretty brutal with the rehearsal so far. Yeah, and I've got classes all day and then rehearsal all night, so it's it doesn't have very much time to relax during the day.